joining us now is Nate Peranto, and he is from White Bear Lake, and he's an entrepreneur, and he has a pretty cool thing. He, he does um, handmade fishing rods and things like That's that. That's correct. And videos. Why don't you tell us about what you do? And, and thank you for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, the, the company's called Della Bay Custom Rods. It's uh, my best friend and I, Sam Guidarelli. It's uh, ran out of his basement right now in Elk River, Minnesota. We hand make all kinds of fishing rods, special in, specializing in, in high-end ice rods, and we do all kinds of open water rods, too, like Waller rods and bass rods, obviously, that's what's popular here in Minnesota. So that's really cool. Is that something you dreamed about doing, or you just fell so into it? You guys Sam started it. He, he kind of was, uh, we lived together in college, and he started making ice rods for fun, and it grew from there, and he asked um, if I wanted to help, help him promote the business. So that's what I do is, is uh, do all the social media and stuff like that, and make fishing videos, and all kinds of uh, promotional stuff for us. So That is awesome. And one of the reasons why you're with us, you've always been very healthy up until recently. Yes. Why don't you tell us about it's your kidney and doctors say that you need a new kidney. Yes, exactly. So last November uh, I was diagnosed with kidney failure. I found out very late in the game that I had kidney problems. I was at a, actually at an ice fishing show and um, on my feet all day and my lower legs swelled up really bad so that was kind of alarming and I went into the doctor and and got tested and he called me after I left and said I need to go to the ER because my kidneys were failing so it was this really shocking just kind of out of nowhere deal I've been mm -hmm. really healthy my whole life played sports growing up and was still playing men's league hockey up until last winter and then yeah it's uh, been quite a whirl whirlwind since since then. And um, I understand that you had some possible living kidney donors that um, worked out, almost worked out for you? Or? So as far as the kidney donation goes, they don't um, up update me with any of that information because it's because of HIPAA, and uh, so if I if there is um, someone that's going through that process, and they know me directly and tell me, that's the only way I'll know if someone's uh, going through that process. But there's been a few people going through that have made it pretty far, and then ended up not being a match. So I'm still sitting and waiting at this point that someone will waiting. eventually. And that's why it's important for everyone to think about registering to be a living kidney donor. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I don't. I don't know if you guys have the links um, for that information. I have we it up. We can put that on, on the my, screen. Yeah, that'd and be awesome. And what is that? So there's a link you can go online to just fill it out online if you'd like to do it that way, or there's a uh, phone number that goes directly to uh, my my transplant coordinator, and they have all kinds of information for you as far as um, who's eligible and things like that. And it's pretty much anyone can donate any age and and things like that. I don't like to tell people the reasons why they can't donate. I'll let them uh, talk to the coordinator and find out if they're a match or not that way because mm -hmm. I guess that kind of uh, is an incentive for people to at least check it out. And it has to certain, the match is different areas, right? That yeah, team. it has to do a lot with blood type is a big one and then there's a bunch of other uh, testings and, and things like that that I have to go through to see if it is. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of other questions that obviously pe people would have that the coordinator would have for them, but uh, as far as like payment and things like that go, my insurance would cover that, so mm -hmm. donors wouldn't have to pay anything out of their pocket. What else is involved with receiving a donor kidney and things like that? Um, well, another fun fact, fun th fact that I learned about kidney donation is that when I receive a kidney, um, they so that my kidneys that are failing now, they just leave them in there and put the new one in. So I'd actually have three kidneys once I do receive that. Wow, that. you'll be very special. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. And um, if someone wants to use it, they can go to that site and they can see about registering and stuff like yep. that. Absolutely. I just go in there and fill out, in, out the info and then the coordinator will reach out to them with more information. 
So looking forward to the future, what are you hoping? Hoping to get a kidney and uh, turn this turn this around. It's been a tough tough year this last year, and then recently the last uh, I would say three four months or so, my legs have gotten super weak, which has limited me physically from doing a lot of things that I love to do, and even just daily tasks like getting up the stairs and things like that. So, been working on physical therapy to try and get some strength back there, but. Once, once I get a kidney, hopefully everything goes back to normal and I can get back to living life. Well, we really appreciate you taking time to be with us and we just wish you all the best and that everything works out well for you. So thank you so much, Thank Nate. you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Really a pleasure. So thank you. And that is our show. Thank you for joining us. We hope you join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.